our beautiful city is experiencing new growth and development like never before. Yet despite this tremendous growth, one in three Cincinnatians are struggling to survive. Nearly 90,000 of our neighbors are living below the poverty line, facing massive challenges that are overshadowing their family's hope for a better future. Children who grow up in poverty are 32 times more likely to remain in poverty throughout their entire adult lives. This is a generational challenge. We believe our neighbors need a better path to a brighter future, and we're called to alter the patterns of generational poverty and to bring hope to those who may be discouraged, empowering them to break that cycle of poverty and to change the trajectory of their lives and their children's lives. Every number has a name. Every name is our neighbor. Every neighbor has a personal story of struggle and success. We wanna introduce you to four of our neighbors. I came to CityLink because I had just gotten into a car accident. It was a moment where I felt like I could easily have not been here. And it was that freakish morning where it snowed and in an hour it was gone. I just ended up spinning and I smacked into someone else. It was a very scary thing. At the time, I was doing a AmeriCorps VISTA program. So I didn't have a lot of money um, to use towards getting a car and I definitely didn't have the ability to pay a car note. And a friend of my mom had told me about the program, Changing Gears, to get a car. She knew I had a little boy and I had just started a job, so I needed transportation. So to start, I started with the financial literacy classes and then I got into the Changing Gears with like sweat equity and you have to get car insurance. You need to know the basics of how to maintain the car which those are also classes in the change of gears. It's a uh, vehicle maintenance and vehicle ownership. Like I know how to change a flat. I feel pretty good about that. I needed everything that I got from this experience. Monthly, um, you meet with a financial counselor. You have to have some understanding of how to um, maintain your finances in order to have a car because once you get the car, you have to be able to pay for any repairs or anything that happens to the car. For me, it's been great because having this new job, I didn't know what a 401k was. I didn't really know anything about insurance, um, investing. So I came with a lot of questions and Ms. Stevens has been really good about helping me through that process. I now have a college plan for my son. I am saving for my retirement whenever that happens. Um, and I have an understanding of investment. Even though it's kind of shallow, I at least have an understanding of how it works. So it's been good. It's a good thing. We're always learning. I think that's the goal. I seen like a lot of my family members or my friends that are either dead or in, in, in prison still to this day for being in the street, selling drugs, robbing people, just not living by the right, by the right meaning of life. I was born to it. That's just the life that I was really fed from the people I was around, like my family members, that's all they knew. And then my mama passed away when I was 12. And then like my daddy, like he was in and out of, in and out of prison, like. So, being in the streets, do whatever it take to survive. Stand out all night, trying to make money, gunshots, people rob. It's real out there. I said, yeah. It's all a survival game, I guess. It's all a, it's a survival. A lot of times 
individuals are just growing up in this lifestyle. I hear story after story about this is what I was taught. This is what my dad did, this is what my uncle did, my cousins. And getting out of that, um, I think you have to have a vision to get out of that cycle. I used to box. My hands was registered and um, basically got charged because my hands was a weapon, so they charged me for the felonious assault, basically as using a weapon. But I ain't use a, I ain't actually use a weapon, just my hands was registered as a weapon. So that's basically a felonious assault because I was fighting outside the gym. Beat the dude up, and then next thing you know, I'm in the Justice Center. I was 18 at that time. I had just turned 18. Two years in prison. It's the devil's playground, that's what it is. It's the devil's playground. Nothing good happened at prison at all. Like, everybody forgot you. Like, how can you be locked in? How can you be locked in here? Like, how can they hold me in here? But they can. And they do. But once I get out, like, it was... My whole mind was just different. I just didn't want that no more. Folks that come in here a lot of times feel like they can't take that next step for a couple reasons. One, they don't know. They've never been exposed. One client that was here said, how do you expect me to be any better when I don't know any better? And it's, that's a tough question. And so exposure is a, is a big deal. Second thing is they, a lot of folks have been told their whole life they can't. You can't do that. What are you trying to do? You can't do that. You're gonna be better than me? Like, what are you doing, you know? And so community will hold back or hold them back. Um, Opportunities just aren't available because of the experiences in their life that they've been exposed to. So to be able to, to shine a light on all of the possibilities for a future is probably one of the best things that we get to do. So somewhere along the way, Jalan had a vision for a better life. And I think that he was provided hope through CEO. I think he thought, this is gonna work for me. This is actually gonna make a change in my life. CEO is Center for Employment Opportunity. They help people that has been to prison or in and out of prison get jobs, better their life, start a new journey, I guess. They basically, they just reach out to people like me. Like basically like people that got lost souls. Lost souls, they don't, have, don't know where to start, don't know what to do. You kind of feel like they're gonna give up and go back to doing what they do, but they, they change your whole mindset. Like, they change the way you think down there. They ain't judge me out for the, what I did or what I went to prison for or whatever. Like, they just, they just ran with it, like, and just accepted me, basically. They accepted all of us. They all treated us the same, though. They still all treat us like normal people. Like, we ain't a prisoner. Like, we ain't, oh, he's a felon. Like, now. Nah, Look at us like that. They just look at us like we made a mistake and it can be fixed. You have to go through the whole workshop, listen to all the instructors talk about interviewing skills, networking skills, smart money. Catholic Charities comes in and does a piece um, about conflict management in the workplace. So it's really nine to four, all day long for four days, gaining these skills. And then you go to work that following Monday. And so it's getting up early, coming down here, they start at 7.30, getting on the job crew and going and working outside no matter what the weather. And you have to get up and come and do that every day and really work hard and prove that you want it. And Jalan did that and he did it quickly and it was noticed. Basically train you as they go, show you how it is to work again. So when you do get a job, like you won't be out just like you just getting thrown in there with the shark. You got the feel again and they get you ready. Not only did they give you a job right then and there, but then they help you get a, a career job that you can actually benefit from. 
instead of just working and living paycheck to paycheck, you actually got it like a good lump sum. Like you get to you get to survive. It's my goals. Take care of my son. Watch him. I just want him to just do good. I don't want him to go down the path I went. I want him to have a job. I want him to do good things. I want him to go to school. Life before CityLink was hard. My mother, she's 80, so I help her a lot with her, uh, with her medication, with her groceries and everything on a, on a regular basis, maybe twice a month. So it was kind of hard trying to help her and then trying to keep gas in my car, trying to keep food on the table, trying to make ends meet because I was only you know, bringing home maybe $700 every two weeks. I would work overtime every week just to make sure my check was at least $800, $900. I was a front desk uh, administrator at one of the hospitals, helping the doctors and everything, but I was traveling all the time, never getting mileage, never getting any reimbursements. I would close, I would open. If someone caught off, I would fill in for them. I was even in the emergency room one morning till four o'clock and I said, hey, I'm gonna be late. She said, no, I need you here. Someone else caught in. You know, so often we find folks that are coming in here looking for a better job or the next step because they're working in a, a job that there really is no opportunity for upward mobility. So maybe they've taken an entry level position and they're not qualified for the next step or they don't even know how to go about getting the next step or that even a promotion is something that's within their reach. I was looking for a career in IT, so I decided to go ahead and check out CityLink, sign up for Prescolis. It was an eight week kind of like boot camp crash course for IT for software testing. It was really intense. You had to be here every day from nine o'clock to 4.30, but you couldn't be late. It was a career dress. You had to treat it like it was a job. I told my son about the software testing class here at Perscolis, you know, while I was going through it, like, hey, you have to do this, it's gonna help you in your future. He didn't really believe me until I started working. I actually was hired before I graduated. And then that light bulb clicked for him, wow, this is something I need to do. He's always making sure, hey mom, you know, I wanna make sure I have a career. I don't wanna keep applying for different jobs like my friends. I wanna make sure I have benefits. And he actually texted me the other day and says, I wanna start my retirement. On his Facebook page, he says he's proud of me. I've been on my own since I was 12. My mother was an alcoholic. My father was self-absorbed. They fought all the time, constantly. I think my mother masked her pain with alcohol, and she turned on me. One day, she had threw me out the house, a teen magazine and some maxi pads, and said, get the F out. <laughs> Starter kit for a teen, huh? So um, I never went back. You know, I've dealt with situations where, you know, I was pillow to post, living where I could. Um, I've slept in hospital lobbies. I've, you know, went over people's house. And I just, I got tired of living that way. And, you know, I came across a lot of people that wanted me to use my body for a place to stay and for food. And for a second, I fell victim to that. You know, I used my body. I, you know, I had, you can come stay, but I want to have sex. And I'm like, I was young, I didn't know. And I let him. I didn't fight it because I didn't want to die. And so from that point on, I, just, I felt like I had to use my body to get to where I needed to be. And so I just got tired of that life. and. Uh, you know, when I when I started building myself, like I, I, need, I need to find a way to get out of the situation. You know, I, I always had a feel for God, but I, I, I didn't really know in the beginning. But as I got older, it started making sense. I ended up being uh, homeless again in 2007. 
God stripped me of every single thing in my life, everything. And as I started building back up, he, he built me up stronger, wiser, more prepared. I gained a lot of stuff inside myself. I met Heather um, in the info session. She came in because she had filled out an application for Habitat for Humanity and they denied her application. And the denial letter said, come to CityLink. Um, they can help you get your finances situated. And so she did, which is, Heather's amazing. And so the fact that she came in here and was like, I'm gonna do this thing was just great. My path with Habitat has been long and amazing. Um, I say that because I originally filled out for it in 2004 and I had lost my job and I got denied. So I didn't pursue it. I just said, forget it. And then later on in life, 2015, it revisited me again. And God wasn't ready for me to have it yet because I had to clean up my credit. So I got denied because of my credit and that's how I found CityLink. She actually came in and knew exactly what she wanted to do from the day that we met, the day that we had goal session. She knew that she wanted to own a home. She knew that she wasn't the best budgeter, but she was willing to learn. She's a fighter for herself and getting herself to getting a house through Habitat. She's a fighter for her family. And she's one that, she's been through some things, especially with her own family, um, where I'm not sure I could have handled it with the, the grace that Heather handled it with. You know, I've been on my own since I was 12, and I've made a lot of messed up mistakes. And when I came to CityLink, um, everything changed. You know, they gave me an outlook, like, you can do this. You know, just stay adamant, we're here for you. You know, here's the tools you need. You know, they gave me a lot of information and I just took the information and, and made it work for me. She was really passionate about making this new life for her and her children. We, we set out on an adventure to make sure that she was gonna be successful in obtaining her own home, being successful in her finances, um, coming from up under some government programs, and we, we, we did it together. And then Heather filled out her application, brought it in, we all prayed over it. I mean, it was like a big deal, and then mailed it in, and then she got approved, which was great. Habitat for Humanity, we found out last year, they built 22 homes. We were 12 of the 22 coming out of Smart Money Community Services. It took me two years to finally get approved for Habitat for Humanity, but I'm stronger, I'm wiser, I'm more aware, I'm debt-free. Um, I'm in a better place, and God wanted me to be in a better place before I took this journey. City Lake as a whole is a great place. It's not a handout, it's a hand up. If you are willing to commit to making a change, and, and you're willing to meet your goals, CityLink is the place for you. But it's all up to you to want the help. A person can try to help you as much as they want, but if you don't want no help, you're never gonna get it. Right? I wanna be in a position where I have something that I can pass on to him that can help him to be better off. CityLink has changed my life altogether. I mean, from what it was, Last, beginning of last year to today is a complete difference. I'm happier, I'm in better health because I was able to get better training. And CityLink has definitely been there for me and they don't want nothing from me except for success. And that is important. The only thing I think about is just getting up, waking up, going to work, progressing myself in life. I feel like somebody. Yeah, I like somebody. <laughs>